Good day everyone, let's do an SE breakdown. This video we're going to go over is one that I had in Lexington with a friend of my name, Maria. I'm not really good at the English, I'm just practicing, so... Que lingue... Oh, Maria? I, I shouldn't have said Spanish. It. You speak Spanish? Yeah. I speak a little bit of Spanish, so if you want to... Oh, let's talk about this real quick. Uh, we're going to do some breakdowns on SE. We're going to learn about some of the things that we could do better and basically just review a video I haven't seen since around April of maybe last year. Uh, this book that I have in the frame is uh, The Day I Ate Whatever I Wanted by Elizabeth Berg. It's a collection of short stories that helps you connect with your feminine side. Very, very good book. Ah, oh, it's such a nice book. It's just a really good book. It's rare to see stories written well from that have good female characters that aren't written by dudes. I'm probably getting into a tangent here, but anyway, I recommend the book, The Day I Ate Whatever I Wanted, Elizabeth Berg, real stuff. Don't read her novels, short stories are where it's at. Let's Throw that go. in, that's totally cool with me too. If you I, want I can't to. speak it back as well, but I can interpret it pretty, pretty good on my end. Whatever you want, I'm here to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so she actually meant that. So I was setting up at uh, the Arboretum, which is near Kentucky's uh, university, or Lexington University, the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Uh, it's nearby the university in a place called the Arboretum. And this is like the first year of, or the first week of school for the college there. So we had a lot of freshmen walking by trying to explore the place. And Maria came by and she's just like, hey, I want to practice my English. I saw you had a sign that says, let's chat about whatever you want. Let's do it. And I thought that was a really cool opportunity. So um, there will be a moment where we try to figure out what to talk about and then see how, if possible, we can explore that belief or motivation, whatever. Cuando juntos a usted, quiero practicar mi español. Is that how you would say it? Quiero practicar mi español, sí. Quiero practicar en mi español, pero ahora... So yeah, like good, I said, but... I got a hobby hey. where I talk to people for five minutes, five minute timer about maybe something that they motivates them, something that they think okay. is true, something that really they're certain about. Is there anything like that for you? Yeah, well, I'm 17, so you're 17. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, okay. So normally, normally when we get a conversation starter, it's it's really good if it's on a claim that is, you know, I would say like worth exploring in in this kind of format. If someone says they're 17, I almost, I believe they're 17 too. <laughs> There's not much that I can do about that. And it's, it's a pretty mundane claim to explore and immediately, you know, prove that's the case. You can look at her and she sees like she's a young kid. So, um, what I'm going to try to do from here is pivot really early on in the conversation and try to find something more meaningful to talk about. And that might take a while, but that's the goal here. And I typically only pivot at the very start of a conversation and not when we've already began delving into like an established belief claim and trying to find out, oh, what's what's really here? And then if I find something more interesting, even if I'm like, you know, a, a third or two thirds of the way into a talk, I'll stay on that topic. But if we're at the very beginning, I'll pivot to something more interesting. And that way we can both get something a bit more out of it. But yeah, I believe she's 17, obviously. Let's let's see if there's something more interesting below that surface. I know. Is there anything more important to you than, than the age? Or at 17, like what's um, well, I mean, really important to you? Right now, I think it's finding what I want to do, okay. what I want to do the rest of my life. Okay. Finding okay. what makes me happy. And that's important to you? Yeah. You want to talk about that maybe for five minutes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Starting the timer. See? I'm Thai, by the way. That's not a bad thing. I'm timer. Maria. Maria? Yeah. Maria. Maria. Everyone says Maria, but Maria. Yeah. Maria, I like that. Okay. So, Maria, you want to talk about, um, I guess, basically trying to find something that's important for you in the future? Yeah. What do you have in mind? Well, I think that maybe what would make... So at this point, I am keeping track of what she's saying on the, the notepad. But no, I'm not really taking aggressive amount of notes. What I'm writing down is just to signify that I care about what's being said to me. And what I'm really trying to do is just make sure that 
I'm showing positive body language that like, hey, I care about what you're saying. I'm writing it down. But also um, trying to get an assessment of like where we're at, at the beginning of the conversation. Like, is her body language kind of closed up? It's a little bit closed up. Um, is she being thoughtful? Is there some guarded, you know, it, like does she not, you know, think that I am genuinely interested about the things that she's saying? Or is there, you know, uh, some some key words that she's trying to stay away from or leaning on on a great deal? And can I pay attention to that at the beginning of the conversation? Basically, I'm just trying to get some sort of anchor to understand where we're at, how comfortable the, the, the interview partner is, and um, where could we actually take this conversation in the future? But I think what's really important is that the marker board, as I'm taking notes, you'll see that I'll stop as needed to, to turn my focus back on my interview partner. But really that marker board is just to show, hey, I care about what you're saying. I'll write down a couple of keywords, but I'm really here focused on you. Hopefully I, I keep, I, hopefully I keep that. I say that now, but I don't know what I did back a year ago. So still, I would say this marker board is just to show, hey, I care about what you're saying. And if I find that, you know, there's something that I'd like to talk about, you know, uh, or go back to, I, I at least wrote down that keyword, but I'm mostly just focusing on you and I'm keeping track of your body language and making sure you're comfortable and we can have like a good solid chat. All right, let's go. Me happy is helping people. Okay. Finding, finding like the way to be better that I am right now. Mm -hmm. You want to do self-improvement so that you can ultimately help people yeah, in the I'm, future? I'm actually working in that right now. Body language is opening up a little bit right here. Really, what are you doing? Well, I came here to learn English, to practice English from Colombia. Okay, okay. So I think that's an improvement and it has helped me so far a lot. Okay, are you here with school or is it just... No, uh, um, I just graduated from high school. Okay. So I came here like to take a gap and practice my English and then yeah. I will go back to Colombia. Okay, what kind of professions are available for you to help people in Colombia? Um, well maybe be a doctor okay or know how she say so like see how her language like look she was a little bit open as she was talking about you know her her home country and like taking a gap which is like when you take a year off and just have fun <laughs> after high school but when i when we go back to the career option and she throws out doctor body language closes back up again and that's something i'm noting here Without, I probably don't even realize it, but I'm mimicking the BL without even realizing it. But you have a lot of different kinds of body language. Positive, negative. That's the easiest way to, to interpret it. Negative. And I'm not... Or you can say open, closed. Open. I would say like a guy punching you is negative body language. But like I would say this is closed up. In the sense of like she doesn't... She's saying doctor, but she doesn't really need, she doesn't seem to be as inspired when she says that. She's more of like, hey man, I'm having fun. So what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know, a doctor. I was like, do you really want to be a doctor? Maybe that's something worth digging into. And that's probably where I'll take the conversation. I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of studying architecture. Architecture? Yeah, and that's a challenge because... I'm trying to find a way to help people through that. Okay. But I'm not sure how yet. Okay. When do you like? I like. I guess like not just designing a building, but like also knowing how to make it safe and like yeah. the electrical means of like getting everything wired right and then like following the laws. Yeah. And There's a lot of components to architecture. And maybe making it more environmental friendly. Okay. Oh. Okay. Environmental. Cool. Is. Why is it important to make something environmental? We're finding something well, really cool um, as far as architecture is concerned. If you got a big yeah. pile of money, like, just make it any way you can. Don't worry about it. Yeah, You're like, no, environmental. Why is that important to you? Because I'm 17 and I'm really concerned about the nature and how we are changing mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. And it has been a lot of changes um, in the last, I think, 1,000 years. You can see it's a lot more open, the body language here. And 
I'm not really taking as many notes because I am just really focusing on what she's saying. It's it's cool how we went from. Uh, so just to re recap, she's like, I I need to figure out what I want to do for us in my life. I want to help people. And she throws out doctor, but then she throws out architecture and there's a lot more into it. And so I throw in, well, you know, there's a lot of things to architecture rather than just like drawing. Like you got to know specs, regulations, maybe the current laws, um, electrical work. If you can do some engineering, that'd be great. Um, loading strength, materials. There's a lot of stuff that goes into architecture. Like what about it like draws you in? Like, is it like the nitty gritty stuff? And she's like, oh, I'm all about that nitty gritty stuff. <laughs> I'm all about it. In fact, I'm into some weird, you know, environmental compliance things. It's like, oh, whoa, let's go into that. I, I, like, I like people who, who know like the minutia of their passions. And now we're beginning to fall into it. But not only just like the, the obscure details of a particular, you know, hobby that she has or like a future career but also why she's motivated to have these um details in her head with relating to the thing that she loves so much and now i think we're going to go onto the path towards figuring out not just what she knows but why she knows it or like how she got to this passion net belief like how what's the mechanism that led her to being so compelled to follow the path of uh, becoming an architect. Sure. And for example, right now in my country, it happened a really big disaster and a big pretty lake just okay. got ruined. Really? Yeah. So I think we should be, we should think more about our planet because it's where we live mm. and we want to live more time that we are supposed sure. to. Why did the lake change colors in your country? Um, I'm not sure how to say it in English, but this big um, in petroleum. In industry? Yeah, industry. It's a big industri industry industry ah. that controls, um, I don't know if the word petroleum. See. Si. Yeah. yeah. So all of the petroleum got, I'm, I'm thinking of the word in English. Uh, dumped? Yeah, in a lake. Okay. But it was an accident. Oh, okay, okay. But still, there's nothing they can do and the government is not really doing anything to, mm -hmm. to yeah, like, to punish them for that mistake they made. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. So that's a really, I mean, maybe you haven't been in Colombia, but it's <laughs> a really pretty country and it's sad that we are losing that thing. I see, I see. How will architecture or your future in architecture help to alleviate something like that from happening again. And I'm going to think about this for a bit, but sometimes you get the... So, like, if this was, like, a religious conversation, and essays typically done on religious topics, that so much that it gives the impression that it can only be done on religious topics, but that's not the case. It's really just trying to figure out, okay, so what's something that you strongly believe how did you come to that conclusion? Like, and is that conclusion reliable? And so we've come to the idea that she doesn't like she doesn't like companies that inadvertently damage the environment. And she wants to learn architecture. But I'm asking her, how are you connecting these two? And how does one affect the other? And how does learning about architecture or starting a career in architecture lead to this ultimate gain? of improving the environment and i think it's cool just to fact check or you know like in, in the same capacity of se is like okay so you know you you believe in a god because um people are kind to each other how does this god belief lead to people being kind to each other or um you can't get you can't drive your car you're going to put gas in your car how does putting gas in your car let you drive your car? Like, could you just walk me through that? In the same aspect, I'm doing the same thing here. And if there's a reliable path between her being an architect and her improving the environment, then I want to know about it because I want to know about true things. And all I'm doing here is helping her figure out if that relationship is reliable or not by asking her these questions. That's the framework of Essie. So I like, I'm not even like, I'm, I am not challenged. I'm not challenged or I'm not, 
attacking her idea of being an architect and I'm not doubting the concept that you know industries can pollute the environment but what I'm focusing on is how her how her motivations can lead to the conclusion that she's aiming for and seeing if that pathway actually connects the two together and if they do great I learned something new and maybe we helped her realize something a little bit more nuanced about the belief that she had and if not that's also a good thing too because then she might realize a better way to help the environment and that's where SC's really good at it's just a way to help people think about the things that they really care about and it's so cool they can do this on more things than just you know uh, religion or you know political beliefs or whatever but you can do it on you can do it on those things but you can also do it on mundane things too hey what's your favorite movie um let's see what is my favorite movie i don't know i got a lot of favorite movies grand budapest hotel right it's like why is it your favorite movie because i really like scenes with meticulous action going on behind the scenes or uh in in the in the background and then we can like figure out okay so uh if there was other movies that had meticulous you know, actions in the background. Would you like that too? I was like, maybe I would, because that's my criteria that I'm basing it off of. So I can have like passions that are like very mundane that we can look at in through an SE lens and see if I came to them through a reliable way or not, or a reasonable way or a consistent way, or a way that's convincing to other people. It's just a really versatile approach to talk about people's really hardcore beliefs, motivations, hobbies, etc. And that's what I really like about it. So now we're getting into the meat of it, which is how will your future in architecture help to alleviate, you know, these uh, environmental disasters from happening again? How are these two things connected? Can you help me out with that? I don't know. I'm trying to, to think about it and to find a way maybe to relate those things. But I don't think it's just um, what I study, mm -hmm. what is going to to make that change mm. I think that I have to do other things that maybe will help me Como es? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so else? bad at Spanish what else? Okay. Como es? Um, how do you say other things what what, Como, okay. what other things I don't know how to say other que Spanish otras cosas. Otra, yeah. otras other. cosas sí. okay okay yeah okay I'm still um, coming back. That's crazy. maybe I could I think it I think it uh, you, uh, so for architecture, would you like... Cons so here's a good point. Um, I love I don't know as an answer. I don't know is a completely justified answer for when you don't know something. But SE is not about, how do I put it, catching people in an I don't know statement. It's really a helpful way for two people to learn something. Or even if you're doing SE on yourself to help you learn more about something as well. But... The way I see and I don't know, it's not a destination. It's the start of a journey towards learning about the thing that you could learn more about. And that can be done with help. And it can be done with someone who's also interested, who doesn't know <laughs> either way. I think like the I don't know is like the perfect place to start learning from. In fact, I it's 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 the number one best place to learn from because you come at the the approach with as little bias as possible and i don't know either how architecture can lead towards like this um stopping of colombian um uh, pollution so we're working on this together now and we will fact check our reasoning as we go so now it went from like a so like even though the conversation went from like a one way with me asking questions to maria to now like we're now going to start throwing ideas back and forth against each other. This is entirely what SE is. Like, it's not one-way SE and then two-way SE. It's like, no, this is just what SE is. It's people trying to figure out, or the attempt to figure out, why we care about the things we care about. Why, how we know the things that we know. Why do we love the things that we love? Like, all these things fall into SE, and I just think it's really cool. Consider developing um a physical platform to maybe make it easier for industry to like throw away yeah, potentially maybe. dangerous things so that they don't get into like water streams that other people use yeah that's a good idea oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. go ahead and take yeah. that take okay, it yeah. <laughs> that's actually a pretty 
interesting field and a lot of people can benefit from that that's definitely something that you can positively use i think um why what if it was oh, we're what going if deeper. it was better for you financially not to do this like not to take that route like what if you got rich not doing that at all or i wouldn't i wouldn't i i i wouldn't like, would there be any other motivating... Not to say, like, you're trying to destroy the planet. I'm yeah, not saying yeah. that. But I'm like, is there any other reason why you want to go into architecture rather than helping people and helping the environment? Is there any other aspect behind it that you think... Yeah, so that's the idea. So, like, typically when people say... Like, and I'm putting, framing this in a God belief again. But if someone says, hey, I believe in God because uh, personal experiences... <laughs> you get that a lot. Personal experiences and um, my faith... Now you have two different, um, uh, uh, I would say, like levels or like options to go in the conversation. It's just like, should I talk about these personal experiences this guy had, or should I talk about the faith thing that this guy's talking about? Only talk about the one that's the most important to the person, because if it turns out that personal experiences isn't really what's supporting the belief, you should have been talking about the thing that is supporting the belief, because that's the more meaningful conversation to be had. And what I'm doing in this conversation right now with Maria is using that exact same framework and now saying like, okay, so you believe that learning architecture can help to reduce pollution, but what if it was much more lucrative for you to take a different option? And she says, well, I don't care about the money. So like, all right, money's not a concern, but is, is there anything else that's also a motivating factor for you to maintain this course on learning an architect? And if so, and we can figure that out, maybe we can see which one of the two are more important. And then maybe we would have a better idea of what actually is this motivation that's leading you down this path, if, if any at all. It's like interesting for you to like put in the What's work the foundation, that long right? to get that. Yeah, well, I think that would make me happy. Boom, okay. there we go, that's because, not bad. Because um, I really like to draw a lot. Yeah? And I also like math, but it's kind of hard um, to find a career that lets me do both. Okay. So I got into architecture and I thought maybe that's what I have to do. Okay, I see. Do you ever worry that, I know we're almost out of time, but do you ever worry that doing something that you love as a means, as a way to keep you, you know, fed and have a roof over your head? Yeah. Would you ever get tired of it? And then do you have other things that you love that you could do on the side? Like if you turn your hobby into a profession, maybe it doesn't feel like a hobby to you anymore yeah well i think that it's important for me to do something that i love mm. because i'm not thinking that it's what i'm going to do the rest of my life but most part of it so i'm really concerned about doing something that makes me happy sure but also that lets me help other people okay and i know that at certain at a certain time i will get tired of it i mean I'm going to do it almost all day. Sure, yeah, So yeah, yeah. I'm going to be stressed, and when I get to work, it's going to be a lot of things that I have to think and I, that I will have to do. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I will end up thinking, that's not what I like, but I know that deep inside it is. Okay. So I have a lot <laughs> of other things that I like to do, and maybe I'll get some time to practice that or to do that things. That okay. also makes me happy. Okay. Yeah. Ultimately keeps you happy. Would you mind if I just summarize real quick? Yeah. Cool. I think this is good talk. So, Maria, uh, I can't do it in Spanish, even if I try. Yeah, don't worry. Um, do it anyway. In el futuro, si quieres un trabajador, uh, arquitecto, ¿cómo se dice? Arquitecta. Arquitecta. Para, para mujer. Para, ¿cómo se dice? Ay, ayuda. So in the future, you want to have a, a job as personas aquí, architecture uh, in el mundo. Sí. For, for y, a woman. Oh, and... Si quieres una profesión... I'm going to try to translate with my terrible Spanish. How about that? Sorry about that. I'm just... I can't reversing. do it in Spanish. Even if I try. Yeah, don't worry. Okay, let's do it. Bad translation. Let's go. 
in el futuro, si so in the future, you want the job uh, of, of an architect? Architecta. Architect. Architecta. For, para for para women, it's para, 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 So, how do you say you, you want to help all the people in, in, in here? Sí. No, you want to help all the people in the world, right? Yes. Y si quieres una and you want profesión, a profession? Un trabajo, profesión. Profesión. Uh, uh, que a job or profession? Sinta, sentia, that will make you uh, feel happy. Que te haga sentir feliz. Make me happy. Que te haga, como si, otra vez, uno, uno, uno más. <laughs> That will make you happy. Que te haga sentir, <laughs> sentir feliz. 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 It's the same in English. It's right? the same in English. you feel happy. Yeah. 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 Maria, yeah. thank you so much for nice the talk. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Have a good day. <laughs> so that was a fun chat. So let's just do a quick little review of everything that happened. So we started off with a conversation being like, hey, I'm 17. You want to talk about that? <laughs> And I'm like, dude, I, can't, I don't think we can talk about that because I think it's so obvious that it would be a really short chat. So let's pivot and talk about like maybe what you want to be when you grow up or like what's a motivation that you have. And so we talked about her motivations. She said originally that she wanted to be a doctor. Remember that? Remember that at the start of the talk? She was all like, I want to be a doctor. And I was like, really? <laughs> She's like, no, I want to I be an architect. So architect. And then we decided to talk about why she wanted to be an architect. So now we start digging here. So digging to uh, what's really motivating you to be an architect. What's motivating, mo mo motivating. And she said, uh, because of the environment, environment. And I'm like, yeah, but how do those two things connect with each other? Like how does being an architect tie to the environment? And she actually needed some help. She was like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I know there's bad things happening, but I hope somehow my architecture can lead to improving the environment. We threw out some ideas and found out, like, maybe she could help to develop, like, some, you know, um, better mitigation platforms for reclamation or for pollution treatment, um, bioremediation, whatever. There's a lot of platforms that are currently being studied and developed right now that could use an architect to improve whatever engineering capacity they have to resolve those kinds of environmental issues. And what I'm thinking is, that's all nice and well, but what's really <laughs> motivating this? What's really motivating this? And I said, okay, so that's fine and well, but what if you could do that for money? <laughs> what, if you could do, what if you can get way more money by doing something else? And she's like, nah, I, it's not, what about money? And she's like, no. It's not for money. So uh, what really is it then? And she says it will make her personally happy. So like personal happiness, in my opinion, is worth way more than money, dude. Ha being happy and like proud of what you're accomplishing and ha loving what you're doing is literally worth more than money. It is all about, you know, your well-being. And I find like that personal happiness is a is probably the true foundation of the work that she's doing because i asked her at the end it's like hey what if you what if you're doing this and you know you're realizing hey you may not like this because you're you're now forced to do it as like uh as your livelihood and she's like even if that's true i would rather be doing something that i know i love because even when i think to myself ah i hate this job i know in my heart no i don't i still love doing this and i'm like that's cool so we went we dug down pretty deep like we dug down from the hey do you want to be a doctor nah i don't want to be a doctor okay so what can we do down deeper than this and we dug all the way down to like hey i'm i'm motivated to pursue this career because i know it'll make me happy there are a lot of other good things that'll come off of it like maybe i'll be able to help the environment i'll be able to fund myself and and, and improve my standard of living but ultimately it makes me happy and i think that is a fantastic way to conclude a talk like that Essie, like I said, just a really cool way to learn more. Learn more about what you love. And I learned so much in this talk, <laughs> including Spanish. So, hey, that's the end of the chat. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.